Okay, so before I begin the painting with colours, I thought I would let you know that I've primed the orc in black and then given it a heavy zenithal prime of white. Normally, I wouldn't use this much white, but I want this sucker to come out bright. Let's begin painting. Here we go. So I've decided to start a new series, much like my Horus Heresy series. In this series, I'm going to be painting an old hammer or kami. It will be done over a long period of time though. In between all the other 457 projects it appears we have on the go. Now I like an old hammer orc skin tone on my old hammer orcs and the mix I've found that I quite like for that is four parts flat yellow from Vallejo and one part light green. Now this mix is absolutely atrocious at covering so I had to give the skin a few thin coats. Luckily there were only a few bits of skin to paint. He's covered in a lot of armour you see. And here's what the skin tone looks like when it's done. It's a very light green, almost a goblin green eh? I much prefer the look of this to dark orc skin tones. By the way I'm going to base coat all the areas on the miniatures first before I move on to shades and highlights and things like that. That prevents me from missing bits on the miniature down the line which is very irritating. So I want to paint yellow so I'm going to try that yellow over pink trick. To paint pink we need a pink and this is the pink we will use. Vallejo again. With this pink I then painted all the armour on the miniature. It felt a bit like painting a space marine as there was so much of it. And with the pink applied we have this. I actually like the look of the pink but we've already decided on bad moons so let's stick to the plan for once shall we? So it actually took me rather a long time to decide on which clan I wanted to paint for these orcs. I decided to go with bad moons even though I hate painting bloody yellow. Will that turn out to be a bad idea? Time will tell. The next paint up on the block is Vallejo model colour light grey. I would have used basalt grey but I still can't find it. With this grey I then paint all the ribbing and pipes on the miniature. It looks like some sort of undersuit. It reminds me of Gene Steeler cult and I quite like it. Turns out there were a lot of ribbed areas. The orc also had some sort of padded pants that I painted grey too. We don't want too many colours on here. Now it was my goal to keep the amount of base coat colours to a minimum. I would like this orc finished sometime this year. We need a black paint next and I'm using Vallejo model colour black. The one with the wrinkly labels for reasons unknown and it hasn't been in the bath by the way. I like to thin my black paint to make it nice and smooth then paint all the areas I later want to paint metal. Things like the canisters on his back, his gun and what look like upside down trumpets on his back. With the black applied the orc reminds me of Detonator, one of the split second mask vehicles from the 1980s. It was a bright pink and green beetle I think. Lovely late 80s colours. I fancy having some of those crazy late 80s colours back now you know. Everything was really super garish for a time wasn't it? I think it was known to be cool or radical like skateboarding and ninja turtles. We have to get a reference of those in at some point don't we. Now here's a red paint that I do like it's Vallejo Vermilion Red. Apparently Vermilion has something to do with worms. I used this red paint to paint a few of the little details on the orc such as a triangle on his shoulder and the straps down his arms. What the hell is that triangle for anyway? Now there doesn't appear to be many details to paint red so we had that done rather quickly. I think it's the metals up next. Now this time my autocorrect for my script keeps changing orc to pork. Now speaking of pork, 
Hog roast is my favourite food of all time. My god, I want one now. Mmm, hog roast. Now, my metal base colour of choice today is Vallejo Model Air Gun Metal. It has to be the air variety, though. The normal stuff just doesn't seem to thin down very well. Using this metal colour, I then base coat the metal areas. Again, there's not too many. The weird canisters on his back and his weapon. Now, speaking of his weapon, I have no idea what that is. Perhaps it's some sort of bolter variant. I also painted the tips of his claw and that thing on the back of his hand. An orc version of the Harlequin's Kiss, perhaps. An orc snog. Now, I want to know, would you rather a Harlequin's Kiss or an orc snog? <laughs> Let us all know in the comments below. <laughs> When painting gold, I like this. It's Citadel Retributor armor. It covers well and it's actually gold. Gold paint being gold helps. With the gold, I then painted the last remaining details. The venti propeller things on his backpack and some of the trim on that unknown weapon. Does anyone know what it is yet? Oh, I also painted some gold on the snog. One day we'll find out what that thing is. Anyway, next up, it's some washers. Now, the fun thing about some old hammer miniatures is there's always some details on there and you're not sure what they are. Is it a face? Is it a purity seal? No one knows, apart from maybe Bob Nadesmith, expert sculptor extraordinaire. What a legend. The green wash I'm going to use is this. Collie green shade, Coelia, Coelia. Does anyone know the correct pronunciation? Now, using the unpronounceable shade, seriously, can you give them normal names, Games Workshop? I then applied it to all the skin areas. I think there were four skins to do. The face, both the arms, and the hand. With the wash applied, we now wait for it to dry. This takes a little while, so I usually go and eat or get a drink or something. Now, I want to know what you lot do while you're waiting for your washes to dry. You just carry on and let them mix on the miniature. I find hair dryers, like this one, just blow it around everywhere and cause it to dry in a strange way. It's always best to let them dry naturally or organically. Good. To shade the pink, I need a pinky shade. I have this drucky violet to hand and I feel it's worth a punt. It might be a bit too purple though, so wish me luck. I then wash this purple shade onto all of the pink areas. Luckily, it didn't stain as much as I had feared, and it washed nicely into the recesses, mostly. We now have an invisible orc. Ten internet cookies to those that understand that reference. Let's wait another ten hours for the wash to dry. Now, whilst writing this script, I just had really bad déjà vu. Not the character from Top Secret. I was thinking of filming myself asleep while I waited for those washers to dry. Have we done that in a video before? Anyway, so I ended up writing about Deja Vu instead. So no sleeping today. To the surprise of nobody, it was pissing it down whilst I was painting. But then the sun came out and left one of the most intense rainbows I've ever seen. I think my neighbours thought I was taking photos of their houses. It would seem I only have the smallest amount of Nuln oil left. I better put a new pot of this on the shopping list. Remember when it was all out of stock everywhere during lockdown? Fun times. Now using me Nuln oil, I then washed all the grey and the metals. Oh, and the red bits. I considered using a black contrast thinned down, but went with a dedicated wash in the end. That's given me some nice definition to the panels and parts. We just have to wait another three weeks for that wash to dry now. Now, has anybody invented a quick drying wash yet? And if not, why not? Some sort of quick drying additive you can put in there, perhaps? And I'm not talking about a hairdryer. I want an additive. I want something in a pot I can just drip in. Now, I can't remember how to shade gold, so I'm going to guess this Agrax Earthshade will do. It will shade most things. I did consider sepia, but I want it quite dark. It took only a minute or two to shade those gold areas, the weapon trim and those vents on the top. 
What are they even for? And with that wash applied, all the washing stages were done. Good. Now we can get on to some real painting again. Now, I want to know which stage of painting do you prefer? Base coats? Washing? Apparently you do that with your palm now. Or highlighting? Or something else entirely, like weathering? As usual, let us all know in the comments below. To highlight the pink, I'm just going to add progressively more white into it. The white I'm using is Vallejo Model Colour White. I started it with a mix around four parts pink to one part white, then added more and more white paint until it was a reverse of that, four to one white to pink, and then finished it all off with a highlight of pure white. This is the underlayer for the yellow contrast trick. I tried my best to make sure that pink was as white as possible, if that makes sense, only leaving the pure pink in the deepest recesses. Looks really weird now, doesn't it? Now, I have to admit it was at this point I was starting to feel a little anxious. Would this trick work? Would it fail spectacularly? Let's find out. So the yellow contrast I'm going to use to glaze it is Imperial Fist. I should have probably used Bad Moon Yellow, you know, being a bad moon, but I didn't have that one to hand. And would you look at that, it works. I really, really enjoyed doing this. It was pretty easy and reminded me of those magic pictures you had as a kid when you just painted water on and the colours came out. How the hell do they work, by the way? After a few minutes, we have this, a Bad Moon Yellow Orc. I think that trick worked out lovely and I'm very happy with it. What I will do though is let it dry overnight as my heart needs to calm down. So now if I ever want to paint anything like Imperial Fists, I can just use Imperial Fist. Funny that, the clue is in the name isn't it? The next morning Wyatt and I build what we like to call a mega tray out of Duplo. I spend a good amount of time building it and Wyatt spends a few seconds smashing it up. Mrs. Snakeworks calls him the Destructor. Now, I do want to get a highlight back on that yellow, so I'm going to mix a bit of white in with the contrast, and I don't know if this is going to work. Using that mix, I added a few edge highlights back in, for a bit of definition. I think it worked out okay. I did end up having to add more white than I thought though to get the colour I wanted, but we got there in the end. We can paint the other stuff now. Now have any of you lot ever tried the yellow over pink trick? If so, which pinks and yellows did you use? How did it turn out? Let us all know in the comments below. To highlight the grey bits, again we just added white to it. I keep saying we, when really I mean I. I start with a chunky highlight of mostly grey. Then as I add more white, I make the highlight smaller. I think that's the general method, isn't it? After the grey is all highlighted up, we have this. I was really happy with how his knees came out. As the song from Biggles would say, Sexy knees. We've done that reference before too, I think. Have you seen my baby? Have you seen my sugar? Such a tease. Sexy knees. The silver bits are now just two colours, a return to gunmetal and a brighter silver, chrome. Firstly, I reapply the gunmetal to all the metal bits, leaving the black wash in the recesses. Pretty easy, eh? And to highlight it, I just apply some chrome to the areas I want highlighted, like edges and pointy bits. Good choices of words, eh? Now back in the day, I used to absolutely hate painting metal areas. These days, I find the worst things to paint are bolter casing or the dreaded Space Marine backpacks. Horrible. God, I just peaked my mic then. Might be a bit too close to me gob. For me red bits, I'm just adding some white for highlights. As they are few and far between, I wasn't too worried about them looking pink. Again, I first reapply the base colour over the washed area. In this colour, it's vermilion red. Then with some white paint added, I then do some highlights. We're really smashing this knob out now. Now I'm still not sure what the correct way to highlight red actually is, you know. Are you supposed to use some sort of flesh colour? Like a peach? Chris peach? Perhaps? The gold areas are also easy to highlight. We just add some chrome into the mix. 
Again, I used the Leho Model Air Chrome. Like all the other areas I've been painting, I begin by reapplying the gold base coat, and then add progressively more chrome to the mix. It's pretty easy, to be fair. And with the gold done, we have this. Surely there can't be much left to paint. Oh yeah, the face. Now usually, I paint faces at the start of the painting of a miniature, but this time I felt it would be a good idea to leave it until the end. Don't ask me why, I just fancied a change. Now, remember our original skin recipe? We need to return to that. It's 4 to 1 yellow and green, by the way. So this time we add progressively more yellow to the mix for our highlights. We want a nice old hammer orc skin tone, and I nearly forgot to highlight his hand. There we go, the skin tone is finished, but there are a few details on that face we need to pick out. Let's have a goosey. Now I do love the old hammer tone for orc skin. It is very yellow. When did they become a lot darker anyway? Around second edition? In the early 90s? Back to our white and pink. I feel we're using these a lot. With this I'm just painting the bottom lip of the orc. Some people don't agree with pink lips on their orcs, but I think it looks cool and the rule of cool always wins apart from when it doesn't. And with the pink highlights applied, the orc's lips are done. Let's hope he doesn't need any more lip service, eh? I'll get my coat. Now I love me some terrible one-liners. I think it's one of my rights and privileges of being a father. Anyway, I didn't film this next bit, but I painted the orc's eyeballs white. Is that all white with you? Do you see what I mean? I apologise. Now to paint the eyes, I need a red contrast. This volupus pink will do. What's a volupus anyway? With this other unpronounceable contrast, I just bash some onto the eye, leaving the white in the centre. There we go, that'll do. Probably the fastest stage in painting ever. What's next? Now I don't know if you noticed the cock up there, but I forgot to say I painted the big boils on the face pink too. Like his lip. You might have to rewind a few seconds to notice that. If you give a shit, that is. Let's quickly do the teeth. I painted them white with Vallejo model colour white. Then I gave them a wash with Seraphim sepia. And then, of course, I forgot to film me repainting the white bits and showing you how they looked. That's two cock-ups in as many minutes. Oh well, shall we paint the base now? So when doing an old hammer base, we need to paint it green. I added a touch of yellow to a Vallejo light green and painted the whole base in it. It doesn't have the best coverage in the world, so I ended up doing around three thin coats. It's still wet in the footage here, it's not a gloss paint. Next up, we need that shade paint from before. Did we ever work out how to pronounce it? I don't think we did. We then apply the wash to the base and leave it to dry. I tried my best not to put too much on, but still enough to fill the recesses. Now it's very important you let this dry first, or you will end up with an almighty mess. Trust me, because I've done it before. Now using a small flat dry brush, I then dry brushed the base with yellow. The yellow is terrible for dry brushing. Can anyone recommend a better one for this? When that's dry, I then reapply the green wash, but this time I add water to thin it down. This gives us a lot more definition and some contrast. People love contrast, not the paint, the effect. Well, they probably love the paint too. To finish the base, we return to the green base colour we made and begin rimming the orc. Rimming is a stage I always enjoy, as I know I'm almost about to finish. Again, this paint is thin, and it took around four coats this time for a solid, smooth rim colour. Now, while I put my paints away, I just want to give a shout out to all my patrons and channel members. Dan Yallop, Lee Blackley, Donald, Pine Tree, Bobzilla, Charles Marlowe, and Andrew Marrington. Thank you very much. I love you all.
Now, as I said earlier, I would like to do a series of these videos. And I think the next box set in this old Hammer Army is going to be this box of Space Orcs. So this contains 36 superbly detailed plastic miniatures. It's quite a big box. It's very nice, actually. Anyway, an interesting thing on the side here is it says, if you're enjoying this video, then please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. That means you, Jeff. If you are enjoying the content on the channel, then please consider joining the Patreon, the link to which is in the description below or up here somewhere. And that's the knob done. My first ever knob. I have to say, I am very happy with how it came out and it didn't really take that long to paint. If you didn't have to film your process, you could smash these knobs out pretty fast. Oh, apart from waiting on washers to dry. I'm super pumped now to get to work on the next Old Hammer Orc units. And of course, they're going to be Bad Moons, the best of the Orc clans. Such a pretty knob. If you want to see more videos in this Orc painting series, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. And as always, thanks for watching.